Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, is a complex character. Born from a magical stone, Sun Wukong quickly grows into a powerful and mischievous figure. After becoming the Monkey King, he embarks on a quest to attain immortality, studying under a Taoist master, magic, including the 72 transformations. With these abilities, Wukong causes chaos in the heavenly realms, demanding the title of Great Sage Equal to Heaven. His rebellion leads to a massive confrontation with the Jade Emperor's forces. After a series of epic battles, Buddha traps Wukong under a mountain for 500 years as punishment for his defiance. Wukong's fate changes when he is released by the monk Tripitaka, who is chosen to lead a pilgrimage to the West India, to retrieve sacred scriptures that will bring enlightenment to China. Wukong becomes one of Tripitaka's disciples, joined by Pigsy, a pig demon, and Sandy, a former river ogre. The group faces 81 trials on their journey, testing their resolve and strength. These trials range from battling powerful demons like the white bone demon and yellow robe to overcoming internal struggles. Wukong's violent tendencies often clash with Tripitaka's teachings, causing tensions within the group. But Wukong's strength and cunning are vital to their survival. The 81 trials they endure forge a bond between them and ultimately lead them toward enlightenment as they push forward to complete their sacred mission and bring spiritual wisdom back to China. Sun Wukong's story, first told in Journey to the West, has captivated audiences for over 400 years. And today that story continues to evolve, most recently in the visually stunning and action-packed video game Black Myth Wukong. But what makes Sun Wukong such a timeless figure? How has his story changed? from myth to comics to video games. Stay until the end of this video and we'll even explore some incredible fan battles like Sun Wukong vs Kratos or Sun Wukong vs Hercules. Now let's begin our deep dive into Chinese mythology, storytelling and the cultural impact of Sun Wukong across different medias. Sun Wukong journey begins with defiance. His rebellious nature leads to epic confrontations with the gods, culminating in his imprisonment under a mountain by Buddha himself. But did you know that Wukong's punishment wasn't just about stopping his rampage? It was also a way for the heavens to ultimately guide him toward enlightenment. Instead of killing him, Buddha saw potential in Wukong's spirit, giving him a chance for redemption. When Wukong is freed by Tripitaka, it's not random. It's part of a divine plan. His role in the pilgrimage is a form of atonement. This release sets the stage for the epic journey to the West, where Wukong cunning, brute strength and mastery of the 72 transformations are tested against monsters, demons and divine beings. Sun Wukong's legend extends far beyond Chinese mythology and modern graphic novels like The Monkey King Volume 4, where he emerges as a complex anti-hero grappling with power, identity and rebellion. In this volume, Wukong confronts modern gods, deities of technology, media and consumerism, placing his mythic defiance in a contemporary setting. His theft of a heavenly relic is more than a rebellious act, is based on disrupting the balance in a world where gods are no longer omnipotent. In Black Myth Wukong, Sun Wukong is portrayed through a darker, more chaotic lens, with a focus on intense, visceral battles between gods and demons. The game's intricate combat system, heavily inspired by traditional Chinese martial arts, adds depth to these confrontations. Beyond the physical, Wukong's quest for redemption parallels Journey to the West, but with a grittier, more nuanced narrative. Notably, the game delves into themes related to Sun Wukong after Enlightenment, showcasing his growth beyond mythic tales, while also referencing lesser-known lore, such as his encounters with the Four Heavenly Kings and the monstrous Bull Demon King. Wukong's power is legendary. In Journey to the West, he becomes immortal after consuming the peaches of immortality, heavenly wine and Laozi's elixir. Not only can he shapeshift into 72 different forms, but he also wields the iconic Ruyi Jingu Bang, a staff that can expand or shrink at will. Did you know that the staff, which weighs 13,500 pounds, was originally a pillar used to stabilize the seas? This is just one example of how every element of his character is imbued with mythological significance. In comics, Sun Wukong's abilities are adapted in creative ways. In Monkey Prince No. 1, his immortality is challenged by a foe capable of disrupting the balance of his transformations, pushing Wukong's powers beyond combat into a test of his adaptability and wit. 
in modern settings, but did you know that the comics explained also hint at Wukong's connection to the five elements from Chinese mythology? In lesser known tales, Wukong is said to have mastery over these elements, influencing his shape-shifting abilities. Black Myth Wukong takes these legendary powers and translates them into an immersive Sun Wukong gameplay. Players can wield Wukong's iconic staff, perform the cloud somersault and shapeshift into creatures for puzzle solving and combat. While these classic abilities are well known, only a few may recognize more obscure details like the staff's size-changing mechanic which dynamically alters both gameplay and cutscenes, making it far more integral than just a weapon. Did you know the staff also has a secret mechanic where it remembers past battles? This likely ties into lesser-known lore that suggests Wukong's weapon is sentient. Additionally, Wukong immortality isn't just hinted at but is deeply woven into the game's narrative. Hidden dialogues suggest that immortality may influence a unique resurrection system, nodding to his mythic battles with the Ten Kings of Hell. The number 81 in Chinese mythology holds deep symbolic significance, representing the total number of trials Sun Wukong and his companions must face on their pilgrimage. These 81 trials don't just test physical endurance, they reflect spiritual growth. In Taoism and Buddhism, numbers like 81 symbolize a cycle of hardship that must be endured for ultimate enlightenment. Sun Wukong's journey is not just about overcoming external enemies, but also grappling with his inner demons, his arrogance, impatience, and insatiable thirst for power. In The Monkey King, Birth of the Stone, for instance, the trials Wukong faces are not merely physical challenges, but moral tests. Lesser known aspects of his mythology, such as his eventual confrontation with his own shadow or doppelganger in folklore, serve as metaphors for his internal battle against hubris. In Black Myth Wukong, the concept of cyclical trials is woven directly into the game's structure, with environments like lush forests and ruined temples symbolizing Wukong's internal battles as much as his external ones. The game subtly mirrors the 81 trials in the original myth, embedding them into Sun Wukong gameplay that challenges players not just physically but spiritually. A fascinating detail is that the game incorporates elements of Taoist immortality quests, such as the alchemical process of refining one's essence. This reflects ancient Taoist beliefs about transcending the mortal realm. Additionally, the game explores themes related to Sun Wukong after Enlightenment evolution, reflecting his continued journey towards self-realization. Wukong's legendary battles, from his rebellion against the armies of heaven to his fleeting defiance of Buddha, are pivotal moments in Chinese mythology. His clash with Erlang Shen, a deity known for his third eye that can see through any illusion, remains one of the most intriguing confrontations in Journey to the West. What sets this fight apart is the intricate use of shape-shifting. While many are familiar with Wukong's transformations, few know that in the original texts, the battle became a cosmic game of hide-and-seek across different forms and realms. Erlang Shen's eventual victory wasn't just due to his divine sight, but also the assistance of his hunting dog, which tracked Wu Kong when the fight transcended beyond their magical abilities. Lesser known is how this battle reflects the tension between Taoist practices, Wu Kong, and Confucian ideals, Erlang Shen, adding a layer of philosophical conflict to their physical struggle. In American Born Chinese by Zhen Luen Yang, Wukong's influence extends beyond mythological battles into themes of cultural identity and personal transformation. Many readers might miss that Yang weaves in a parallel between Wukong's infamous arrogance and the internalized pressures faced by those dealing with racial and cultural assimilation. The rebellious nature that defines Wukong's journey is mirrored in the protagonist's struggle against the confines of stereotype with the Monkey King's refusal to be diminished by others acting as a metaphor for rejecting externally imposed limitations. What only few notice is how Yang subtly references Wukong's 500 years of imprisonment beneath a mountain, drawing a comparison to the weight of societal expectations that the protagonist feels trapped under. Black Myth Wukong delves into some of Wukong's lesser-known adversaries. One of the most anticipated encounters is with the Bull Demon King, but few realized the depth of their relationship. Before they became enemies, the Bull Demon King and Wukong were part of a brotherhood of demons. This relationship, often glossed over in adaptations, 
highlights the complexity of Wukong's allegiances and the shifting loyalties that define much of his early rebellious period. The game also hints at Wukong's encounter with the six-eared macaque, a doppelganger with the same powers and abilities, whose defeat remains one of Wukong's most controversial and morally ambiguous moments. A battle between Sun Wukong and legendary figures like Kratos or Hercules would be a clash of not only strength but also intelligence and divine abilities, creating fascinating what-if scenarios. Let's break down how these epic encounters might unfold, diving deeper into their powers and potential strategies. Sun Wukong vs Kratos Kratos, known for his god-slaying exploits and raw brutality, would be an immediate threat to Sun Wukong. His blades of chaos, infused with magic and divine power, have ripped apart Olympian gods. But against Wukong, brute strength may not be enough. Wukong's mastery over 72 earthly transformations allows him to shift between forms like insects, animals and even inanimate objects, making him nearly impossible to pin down. Kratos might struggle to land a decisive blow as Wukong could vanish into a cloud of mist or split himself into thousands of clones using the body-outside-body body technique, overwhelming Kratos with sheer numbers and chaos. The key factor here, though, would be Wukong's Rui Jingu Bang. Wukong can manipulate its size at will, shrinking it to the size of a needle or expanding it to the height of the heavens. In a fight, Wukong could use the staff to reshape the battlefield, using it as a bridge to escape or trap Kratos in a canyon of his creation. Additionally, Wukong's immortality, derived from eating the peaches of immortality and stealing the elixir of life, would make it nearly impossible for Kratos to permanently defeat him. While Kratos's ferocity might give him the upper hand in short bursts, Wukong's ability to regenerate and adapt would turn the tide in a prolonged fight, especially if he decided to exploit Kratos's vulnerability, his emotional trauma. Sun Wukong vs Hercules Hercules, the quintessential strongman of Greek mythology, represents raw, overwhelming physical power. Known for his twelve labors, Hercules could easily match Wukong in terms of sheer strength. However, Wukong's agility, cunning and magical arsenal make this a battle far beyond a simple brawl. In a direct clash, Wukong would likely avoid confronting Hercules head-on. Instead, he would use his transformations to outmaneuver and confuse the Greek hero. For example, Wukong could transform into multiple mythical beasts or even shapeshift into Hercules himself, creating chaos and forcing Hercules to question which one was real. The key to Wukong's victory could lie in exploiting Hercules' famous temper by using trickery to provoke Hercules into a blind rage. One fascinating detail to consider is Wukong's ability to create illusions. In Chinese myth, Wukong uses his illusions not just for escape but to completely bewilder his enemies. He could create illusions of past foes Hercules has fought, perhaps even an illusory Hydra or Cerberus to distract and divide Hercules' attention. Hercules may be able to overpower individual illusions, but with Wukong's speed and guile, the Greek hero would find himself outmatched in a battle of endurance. The battle reimagined Sun Wukong vs. Buddha. In the original story, Wukong, brimming with arrogance, challenged Buddha to a contest. If he could escape Buddha's hand, he would be free to rule heaven. Wukong used his somersault cloud, a technique that allowed him to leap 108,000 miles in a single bound, believing he had traveled to the end of the universe. But in reality, he had never left Buddha's palm. Buddha demonstrated the vastness of his power by imprisoning Wukong under the Five Element Mountain. But what if Wukong, instead of falling into Buddha's trap, realized the illusion? Using his body-outside-body body technique, Wukong could create dozens of copies of himself, sending them in every direction to confuse even Buddha's divine sight. One clone would feign submission, while the true Wukong, hidden in the form of a small insect or even a speck of dust, would slip past Buddha's grasp unnoticed. Seeing that Buddha's reach extended beyond space, Wukong could counter by retreating into the deeper realms of magic and transformation, places beyond even the gods. He might tap into the chaotic energies of primordial beings unbound by heaven or earth, allowing him to transcend the physical plane. With this newfound power, Wukong could create distortions in reality, making it impossible for Buddha to locate him. The Imaginary Continuation 
With his escape, Wukong would return to heaven, but this time not as a rebellious figure, but as a force of cosmic upheaval. Wukong would use his newfound abilities to unravel the very structure of the universe itself. Instead of fighting gods, Wukong could transform into a primordial being, transcending mortal and immortal constraints, and challenging the very foundations of heaven, earth, and hell. In this imagined future, Wukong's transformation from a defiant trickster into a cosmic force could represent the culmination of his journey. Not towards enlightenment in the traditional sense, but towards ultimate freedom, unshackled by heaven, hell, or even the Buddha's vast wisdom. Buddha, in turn, might come to recognize that Wukong's rebellion was never against heaven or his own role, but against the boundaries of existence itself.